So how are we going to describe the orientation of our loop? We're going to start out by imagining we're actually in this orientation to begin with. So starting like this, we're going to look at it from above. And now imagine we rotate it at some arbitrary angle so that our normal line is at some angle phi from our magnetic field. So from some arbitrary, uh, some, some position like this, we're going to look at it at some arbitrary rotated angle this way, where our current is coming up this way, across this way, down this way, across this way. It's coming in and out down here, but we can think of it as kind of coming this way. Up, out of the page here, out of the page on this side, across here, down into the page over here, and then back that way beneath. So we'll have a current above this way and below this way, making our loop this way. The important thing is we're going to look at an arbitrary orientation so that there is an angle of phi between our normal line and the original direction of the magnetic field. Let's look at what forces we now have on the charges. To begin with, we'll look at these parts here. So we've got a current here and a current here. So with this current up on the top here, what's the direction of the force? Well, we have a current that is going this way, a magnetic field this way, whoops. So we have a current going this way, a magnetic field this way, I, B, that gives us a force out of the page. For the current in the back that's going up this way, we have a current that way, a magnetic field this way, and that gives us a force into the page. So we have one force on the loop. Think about this loop here. One force is acting this way, one force is acting this way. That's not going to tend to move the loop unless it just tries to distort the loop a little bit, but we'll assume the loop is relatively solid, so that's not going to have any kind of effect to move the loop at all. That's going to cancel each other out. The important forces will be the force on this wire here coming out of the page and this wire here going into the page. What forces are those? Let's remember, the length of that wire is B, little b, so what forces do we have? Well, again, we'll call this one, remember, this is section, what number section was that? That was section, um, from the original diagram, that was section 3 and 5. So this was length 3 and 5. So the force on section 3 is ILB sine theta, I, again, current, L, little b, B, the magnetic field, big B, sine theta. What's theta in this case? Well, the current, make my current magnetic field again. The current is out of the page, out of the board, magnetic field this way. What's the angle between them? It's still 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. So we have big I, little b, big B, sine theta, sine 90, which is 1. What's the direction? The direction of the force, we have I is this way, B is that way, I, B, uh, I, B, the force is up. So the force on this section will be upwards. And the magnitude is uh, little i, uh, uh, i, little b, big b. What about on F5? Again, what's the magnitude? The magnitude of the force, F5, is I, L, B, sine theta. Again, I, L, little b, b, the big b, magnetic field, sine theta. What is theta in this case? Well, the current is now into the page. B is that way. Again, 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. What's the direction of the force? The current is into the page. The magnetic field is to the right. I, B, the force is downward. 
So the force on section 5 is down. F5. Again, notice with this orientation of our loop, the tendency for the forces will be to rotate the loop. Notice that the tendency is to rotate the loop to align the normal line with the magnetic field. It's to make this loop line up so the normal line lines up with the magnetic field. If the loop were this way, the force would still be up and down, which would tend to rotate the loop this way. So if it's this orientation, the torque rotates it this way. If it's in this orientation, the torque rotates it this way. The torque always tends to align the normal line with the magnetic field. If we were to just release this and allow it to rotate, it would kind of oscillate back and forth like that, always tending to bring that normal line back in line with the magnetic field. Excellent. We notice that the forces equal and opposite would cancel out. Let's look at the torque. What torques do they exhibit? Let's remember, how is torque defined? You have to think way back to physics 1111. Torque is defined as R, F, sine, theta. We've got to be careful. What do these terms mean? R, that's the distance from the origin to the point where the force is applied. So in order to calculate a torque, we have to define an origin. The distance from the origin to the point where the force is applied, that's R. F is the magnitude of the force. Theta is the angle between R and F. Let's figure out the two, for, the two torques, the torque for force 3 and the torque for force 5. So what is the torque tau 3? Well, we have to apply RF sine theta for uh, the th force 3. What is R? Well, to figure out R, we have to define an origin. Let's define our origin as on the axis of rotation. So our origin will be on this central line. In other words, in our diagram, we'll put our origin right there. There's our origin. So for F3, what is R? There's our origin. Where does F3 apply? It applies up here. So we need this distance. From our original diagram, you might remember that the distance from the center to the uh, wire uh, I3 is, or the section 3, is one half of the width, and the width was A, so this is A over 2. So R is A over 2 times F. F is I, little b, big B, and then sine theta. What is theta? Theta is the angle between R and F. This is R, that's F. To find the angle between them, we have to put them, how do we put vectors to find the angle between them? We have to put them tail to tail. Let's bring F down here. There's F, there's R. We want that angle right there. How do we find that? Well, notice that the normal line is perpendicular to the loop. So this must be a 90 degree angle. If that's phi, this angle must be 90 minus phi. Now the force is perpendicular to the magnetic field line this way. So that's a 90 degree angle. If that is 90 minus phi, what's that? The angle we're looking for, that is 90 minus 90 minus phi, which is Five. So the angle we're actually looking for, this theta, is phi. So we have sine phi. What does this leave us? We'll just write this as one half i little a little b big B sine phi. What's the direction of the torque? The direction of the torque is the direction that the force will tend to rotate the object. In this case, the torque will tend to rotate the object in a counterclockwise direction. So we'll say counterclockwise. 
That is torque 3. What about torque due to force 5? What is tau 5? Tau 5. Well, we have to apply RF sine theta again. What is R? Using the same origin, we have to use the same origin, R will be the distance from the origin to the point where the force is applied, F5 in this case, which is again A over 2. So R is A over 2. Times F, the force, the force is again I, little b, big B. Times sine of theta, where theta is the angle between R and F, bringing F again up here to the origin. There's F. We want that angle there. Well, again, we can see if that's phi, that angle is 90 minus phi. That angle would be 90 minus 90 minus phi, which again is phi. So we have sine phi. What is the direction of the torque? The direction is the direction that the force would tend to rotate the loop. Again, this torque is going to rotate the loop again in this direction, in a counterclockwise direction. So our torque is also counterclockwise for F5, for torque 5. Although the forces are in opposite directions, the torques are in the same direction. They both will tend to rotate the loop in a counterclockwise direction. The net torque, the total torque, is then this torque, and again we could pull this out to write this as one half I little a little b big B sine phi. Adding the two torques together to get the total torque, we have the total torque is one half plus one half, which is one I little a little b big B sine phi. Excellent. I did not prove this, but for our loop of length A, oops, sorry, A and B, what is A times B? It's the area of the loop. I don't need to prove that. We can see that. What I will, what I will not prove is that we can actually replace this with the area, and that actually works for any general shape we could have a round wire and the torque acting on that round wire would still be the current times the area of the loop times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle phi and what is phi let's remember phi is the angle between the normal line and the magnetic field. So if the loop were arranged, aligned, so that the normal line lined up with the magnetic field, so if the magnetic field were like this, we would have sine of zero, zero torque. But when we have an angle, the torque is going to tend to rotate that loop back in line with the magnetic field. No matter what orientation we put it, the uh, torque is going to tend to rotate that loop and line it up so that the normal line for the loop is in the same direction as the magnetic field. That's what the torque is going to do. Very, very good. Excellent. Well, how can this be used? Can this be used for anything? Well, yes. This is how uh, electric motors work. Electric motors have a rotating section that typically has a whole bunch of wires current goes through those wires and then there is an external magnetic field. Sometimes that magnetic field can be created by magnets, sometimes the magnetic field can be created by other currents that create magnetic fields. We'll get to that in a minute. Currents actually create magnetic fields. The, those uh, uh, magnetic fields then create torques on the loop causing the loop to rotate. What happens is that for an orientation of the loop, as it rotates, the, mag the uh, current in the loop is cut off so that the loop can continue to rotate. And then it reconnects and starts the current in the opposite direction, causing the torque 
to continue in that same direction. And so what happens is the loop just rotates, 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 going in the same direction, constantly influenced by a torque that is always rotating it in the same direction, and that's what creates the, the motor. By having the current, it creates the, the rotor, it's called, that constantly rotates, and it converts then electrical energy into kinetic energy, motional energy. This equation can actually be divided into a couple of parts. Let me make one addition here. In order to increase the torque, what might we do to increase the torque on our loop? So imagine we have a loop. What could we do to increase the torque? We could increase the current, increase the area of the loop, increase the magnetic field, changing phi, that changes the torque, but there's something else we could do. Just imagine, if we had one loop, we would have a certain amount of torque. But if we had a second loop, we would have twice as much torque. Three loops, three times as much torque. So by increasing the number of loops, imagine that our wire actually came up here, went around, but then again and again and again and again and again, and we had many, many wires, that would create much more torque. We would get this much torque for every wire. So we can increase the amount of torque by putting in n, where n is the number of loops. This equation is sometimes broken down into two parts, or I should say three parts. This section, NIA, I want to emphasize that's an area. This is sometimes written as M, the magnetic moment. It has to do with the properties of the loop itself. The number of loops there are, the current in the loop, the area of the loop. The larger M, the more torque we're going to get. B then is determined by the external magnetic field, and phi is then determined by the orientation of the loop. As the loop rotates, phi actually changes. But M, capital M, which is equal to NIA, that has to do with just the loop itself. So sometimes this equation is actually written as the torque is equal to MB sine phi where M deals with the loop, the B is the external magnetic field, and phi is the changing orientation between the loop and the magnetic field. Let's take a look now at how currents actually create magnetic fields. 